we've come to our Friday segment, Movie Spotlight, where we review some of the latest releases at the Korean box office and online. And our critics, of course, bear that responsibility. They've joined us now in the studio. First, we have Jason Bechaface. Jason, hello. It's good to see you. Hello, Jaya. How are you? I'm good, thank you. And we have Darcy Paquette with us as well. Hello to you too, Darcy. Hi. I'm glad to be here. So we begin with a major Hollywood release, the latest in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It is another superhero film. It is The Marvels. Uh, it has the same title in Korean, and it features Korea's very own Park so as well. But, of course, it's led by Brie Larson as Captain Marvel once again. And Jason, this is notably a female-led film with a female director at the helm, Nia da Costa, right? Yeah, that's right. And it's also very multicultural uh, with its cast. We've got uh, Imin uh, Vellini uh, in particular, who's she's actually great. Uh, uh, I might have to check out uh, Miss Marvel. I haven't seen I haven't seen that yet because she's in that series. Mm. Uh, and yes, yeah, so it does feature uh, Pak uh, Sojun, which I'm sorry to say is ultimately a glorified cameo, <laughs> uh, kind of in the, the same way as Parasite. But we'll get on, I'll get onto that shortly, mm. or we will. Uh, anyway, um, but yeah, I'm not going to bore you with the history of uh, of MCU. I've actually lost track. I, I don't know where where it's going. I don't know where it's been. I'm just you got this world of multiverses and uh, but i can say it's it's the 33rd uh, film or phase five of mcu mm. and it's sequel to captain marvel from 2019 starring brie larson and continuation of the miniseries miss marvel which i haven't seen so i was a bit disoriented i don't know about you darcy when i was when i was watching i was like what's going on <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah in a nutshell we've got um Captain Marvel, uh, or uh, Carol Danvers, played by Larson, she gets her powers entangled uh, with Camilla Khan and uh, and also Monica Rambeau, and that basically takes them on this this mission to uh, once again save the universe. Of after, course, <laughs> after a <laughs> again, a, again, again, <laughs> after a Kree revolutionary attempts to restore her homeland. Uh, after a civil war so she's somewhat bitter and she wants to use all the powers and she can get, literally get her hands on um, and we've got Pak Sojun who plays Prince Yan so an important character uh, he's husband to uh, Captain America and Prince of this planet uh, uh, Captain Marvel sorry ca <laughs> Captain Marvel sorry uh, yes all these captains are, are in my brain and getting confused uh, yeah he's Prince of the plan planet uh, Aradana and it's directed by an American filmmaker Nia Costa uh, who made uh, Little Woods, Candyman, and she actually yeah, apparently approached Marvel Studios with the Fantastic Four X-Men crossover because, of course, Disney acquired Fox a few mm, years ago. Right. Uh, and if you stay for the credits, you'll know why. So that, 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 was, uh, that was a little treat at the end. Mm. And it's also notable for its length at just 105 minutes. So it's the longest, sorry, the shortest film of MCU, which I think is an acknowledgement, I think, of MCU superhero fatigue. Yes, I'm sure both of you will have uh, appreciated the shorter running time for <laughs> oh, uh, this yeah. Marvel <laughs> film. Darcy, you know, I'm guessing you're not the most enthusiastic uh, Marvel fan, but I know you have enjoyed some of them in the past. So, Darcy, what did you make of this one? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, mean I do acknowledge that Marvel has taken a kind of a unique approach to storytelling in the way that it has kind of you know, started these plot lines in one film and then continued them on in other films. And so everything's kind of linked together. And at least at the beginning, there was this sense that if you tried hard enough, you could kind of keep track of everything that was going on. And, you know, I guess there's just kind of a natural ceiling to that. And unless you're the, you know, the biggest diehard Marvel fan, mm. uh, it's really hard to keep up. And so, so yeah, it is true that, you know, going into a new Marvel film these days, it kind of feels like you need to sit down and study a bit before you, <laughs> you go to the theater just to make sure that you understand who everybody is and where they're coming from and how they got their powers and all this kind of thing. Uh, and so this is a similar type of story. I mean, I had seen Captain Marvel uh, four years ago when it came out. Uh, I didn't have a really clear memory in my mind of everything that had happened then, but uh, but yeah, this film kind of throws you in and it's, you know, it's fast paced. Um, yeah, <laughs> I mean, 
a lot of people are talking about kind of a crisis within Marvel. And, you know, we've reached the point where, you know, they were riding high for so long. And I guess it was inevitable that at some point, you know, they would lose their momentum. Mm. Uh, and so the, the dialogue around this film is extremely negative. And, you know, on the one hand, I, um, you know, I, I'm going to kind of join in <laughs> because I think that there are a lot of ways in which this film doesn't quite, you know, live up to anybody's expectations, I think. Right. Um, I mean, on the other hand, it's just, uh, there is a real pile on. And so I, I feel, you feel bad, bad just kind of like right, joining okay. in, you know, and just... Uh, well, some critics, target, some but... critics have actually enjoyed it. Mm. Uh, I, I kind of enjoyed it. But, but... I've seen middling reviews as well. Yeah, tell us what you enjoyed about it, Jason. Well, I mean, it's kind of fun. There's, there's this great sequence involving cats, which I loved. Uh, it was a weird scene. It was a weird, it was a weird scene, but I loved it. Uh, I, for one, loved it. Maybe others didn't. Uh, but, yeah, you know, it does have issues. Um, I mean, it's just a bit all over the place. And it's for me, it was, like, really hard to follow because I hadn't watched the, um, mm. the series. And maybe it was because it was an early morning screening. And, yeah, I mean, it's I get, get like, you know, it's good to kind of, you know, put eggs in the... Uh, in the story for people to find or uh, easter eggs yeah yeah mm. but but yeah it's not it's it's for me it wasn't really um i mean it was entertaining but it wasn't it, I, I don't think it was engrossing enough for right. me to kind of you know i guess <laughs> say it's one of the best marvel films ever to you know get uh release on screen sure i find it interesting that both of you are unwilling to give it a kicking actually well, because me, perhaps me... you have such <laughs> affection for perhaps the idea of Marvel films and the fact they have done one, they have reached such a big audience. I, mean, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't go that far. Okay. But, <laughs> but Marvel maybe is yeah. definitely, Marvel is, I mean, Darcy mentioned, uh, talked about the, the crisis. Uh, it's definitely peaked. Mm. You know, it peaked, I would say it peaked with Endgame and then Black Panther. That was a really good kind of right, uh, okay. period for, for Marvel. That it, was, it, was, it was phenomenal because you have this hugely culturally significant film, Black Panther, and Endgame really kind of took the blockbuster formula to a whole another level, which is really hard to do. But then since then, it's, it's you know it, you can you, you can go up to a certain point, but then it's then it's like kind of crashing back to earth. And I think that's yeah. kind of what's happened. I mean, it sort of becomes a parody of itself. Yeah. And, you know, there's certain sequences in this film where I think that they were aiming for kind of so crazy it's genius, <laughs> um, but it didn't quite turn out that way. It was just yeah. kind of like so ridiculous. Right. <laughs> It's a bit annoying, so... A bit disappointing then. Jason, uh, we briefly should mention Park Sojourn as well, seeing as we are... Uh... Yeah, yeah, I, I, I will mention it. I was, in, I was in an elevator earlier, and they, they have one of these screens where you have, you know, the news headlines. It was basically saying, it's a small role, but a significant you know, part. <laughs> he was trying to defend himself. It's, yeah, and I, it was kind of like the Parasite cameo, because in Parasite, it's, it's a very small, but very important role. Mm. And it's similar here. So for those expecting to see him for you know long periods of the film you will come out feeling disappointed because he doesn't appear until like an hour into the film and then he's there for five minutes and then he's gone and so there you go i mean i wonder whether it's because it actually delivers his lines really well in english so they're not difficult lines so i do wonder whether that had something to do with it as well so maybe uh perhaps a foot in the door though for future roles in western films perhaps anyways that was the marvels let's move on to a new Korean independent film that initially premiered at the Busan Film Festival last year is now getting a theatrical release. It's called A Wild Rumor, or Kwein in Korean. Darcy, can you introduce us to this one? Yes. um, And Wild Rumor with a really strange spelling. It's not R-U-M-E-R. It's R-O-O-M-E-R. Right. Um, And yeah, it's a feature debut of Lee Jung-hong, uh, it won the New Currents Award at Busan last year. And I mean, it was a film that I think garnered kind of the most critical enthusiasm among the independent films that were released last year or that premiered last year. Uh, the, the main character works, I mean, sort of as a handyman, carpenter, interior designer. Uh, his name's Ki Hong. And he has found this kind of, um, I don't know, very lucky setup where he's. Um, he's renting out a room in this really nice house. You know, it's a, it's a big house. It's designed in a really interesting way. And it's owned by this young couple who are friendly and each of them seem 
kind of friendly towards him, but right. um, but in terms of their own relationship, there's a bit of tension there. Uh, so so he's kind of in a weird situation where his home, you know, isn't his home, and he's not sure how comfortable to make himself feel. But on the other hand, he's not the kind of character who really worries too much about what other characters feel. Okay, uh, and that's one of the things that makes the film funny is just seeing him relate to all these other characters. He goes about his job. Uh, you know, sometimes things go well, sometimes they don't. Uh, he's a good talker. Uh, I'm not sure he's a great worker, is my <laughs> impression that I got. Uh, and then, you know, basically one day, like, he parks his van outside a <laughs> this building. This is really funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah, I mean, the van ends up staying there kind of at night, and then later he discovers that there's this big dent on the roof of his van. <laughs> he's like, how did this happen? And so at this point, there's kind of an investigation that starts and okay. uh, things there's, start to get revealed slowly from then on. There's obviously a lot to the story. Oh, I mean, is, yeah. uh, Jason, you're laughing away. Yeah. I feel like as someone who hasn't seen the film, we're not quite sure what's funny about it. But mm. there definitely sounds like it's an amusing film, Jason. What do you think of it? Oh, yeah, def it is. And it, it really stayed with me because I watch, you know, 20 odd films in Busan and they can sometimes get meshed together. Mm. And so that's why I always write notes. And um, this one stayed with me. And it's it's a film that you don't easily forget. And it's not I mean, that in a positive way, you know, it's not violent or grotesque or anything like that. But it has a really interesting tone. So that's mm. why I was laughing. I mean, on the one hand, it's. Yeah, it's quite slow going, but there, there are these moments that where this humor is kind of injected into the narrative, and it's really, just really funny. Um, and so, yeah, very, uh, very comical moments. Um, it's not really a social commentary. I think it's a reflection on about work and life, happiness, or rather lack of it. Uh, it deals with relationships. It's not melodramatic. It doesn't really have a, a conclusion in the conventional sense. Um, things do come to a head, but it doesn't have a resolution, so to speak. And so, yeah, it's structurally, it's really interesting. And then you have, I mean, Darcy mentioned the dent uh, in the car, which that's what kind of sets up the film to drive the story. So it kind of sparks off this, this chain of events. But then by towards the end of the film, you kind of forgot about the car. So, uh, or rather the van. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah, the more I think about it, the more I like it. It's a really, really good film. Very impressive feature debut. Right, I see. So it's a film that perhaps uh, seems understated, but somehow gets under your skin. Would you agree, Darcy? Yeah, I would. I mean, tone is one of the most difficult things yeah. for a director to control. And, you know, if a director controls it with such precision as, you know, this director does in this film, then that's a sign that they're talented and, you know, you can kind of look forward to their next work. Um, I have a feeling that the experience of watching this film is also probably quite different you know, in a theater with an audience compared to watching it on your own. Mm. Uh, because, um, you know, I did watch this on my own on a screener and uh, I was sort of like, um, like I wasn't quite sure if I was supposed to be laughing. Or not. <laughs> I think that if I were in a crowd where everybody was laughing, I, I would have kind of related to the film in a slightly different way. Uh, and so I do recommend if, you know, if people are able to go and catch it yeah, in the theater, so. uh, it's just probably a more fun way to watch it but i did really enjoy it again watching it on my own and uh it's yeah it's just really unusual it's a long running time oh yeah it's well over two hours yeah okay um but it you know it didn't feel tiring to watch mm. so um yeah it's i do recommend that people check it out well it certainly sounds like a film to look out for once again it's called a wild rumor that's r-o-o-m-e-r -E as you said darcy <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or kwe in in korean that's where we're going to call it a day jason darcy thank you for your reviews and we'll see you next time yeah take care have a great weekend